Hi, I'm Keith Bachman, Dan Falls EMS trainer. And in today's video, we'll be discussing the details of building and using web graphics on the SM800A. So we're going to be discussing web graphics, uh, but you will see as we're looking through these PowerPoint slides that there is both local and web graphics available here. And that's because they share menuing. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify that we are focused on the web graphics. Um, there is another video that is on the local graphics. So when I am live into a control, as you can see right here, live connection to a control required, then we need to select the graphics editor. So when I go to the utilities, uh, there is an option called web graphics. It's going to look like this here. And that's what we're going to use to launch into our web graphics. And it will automatically pull back all of the data points. That's what you see happening right here. All the data points, when we select this graphics editor, it will be pulling back all of our points. So a little bit about the file structure. Uh, just so background information, uh, initial drawings must be formatted. They will be either in a PNG or a JPEG type of format. Uh, you can see that for web graphics, we want to be a, a JPEG or a PNG type of file. Uh, the size is important. More important were the local graphics that will be discussed later. Uh, for the host network, all controls support up to five web graphics. So we have the option of pulling back or, or setting up for five web graphics, and they can either be a, a JPEG or a PNG. And the sizing here, it does become important, but it's mainly from a, you know, we want to keep it less than one megabyte um, because it does reside in the control and it does have to be pulled back to your computer. So as you can see, FLP format for web vz2 format for local just um, we're going to look at those in a little more detail but just for uh, an understanding those are how the files will finally be formatted once we begin the graphics build here the database overlays will display as real time so that means that my temperatures pressures digitals whatever it ha whatever i put onto my overlay will be updating on a real-time basis once this uh, is complete, the database overlay is complete, that is when we are going to take these files that we are now working with and they're going to be packaged. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that the overlay and the overlay data points that we did and that initial drawing that we had, the JPEG list, for instance, uh, are, are married together and that happens under this DPJ file. So that's a, that is our project file right there. So as part of a package, you're always going to have the package part of it, the project file, and included in that will either be an FLP or a VZ2. You can see that's for the local for later discussion, uh, or you could have both. Uh, they are stored in the control. That is where they reside at. Uh, when I'm going to export them, they'll be zipped and exported into my download file on my computer. The JPEG or PNG files are not, make note, not available for later modification. They are not stored in the control. So you will want to keep a copy of that JPEG or PNG available to you on your computer because if possibly there was a remodel or some change done in the store, they wanted to relocate some cases and then you needed to do the same thing on your drawing, you would need to have this JPEG or PNG to accomplish that. This gives just this overview of the whole operation here. Uh, you can see we have uh, the web, which can either be a JPEG or can be a PNG. Once we import it and we begin the build process, it now becomes an FLP. So in the building process, it's a, it becomes an FLP file. We overlay all the data points. And when we do, we do a save. And the save is when it gets transmitted to the control. And that's all that was what creates the DPJ file. So the FLP and the data points are now combined into a, a, a project file and sent down to the control. If I am viewing web, which is what we're covering right now, if I have multiple controllers, whenever I open up the web graphics, it will gather information from all controls. 
just as a uh, note here, uh, you can see the locals are specific to each individual controller. We'll cover that later. So I open up uh, the graphics and it did a pullback and it has all the data points. It also, you can see some things are grayed out, some things are highlighted, depends on uh, where we are in the whole process here. You can see that I have two options available, whether it be the browser view, that's gonna be our web graphics, or whether it's a local view, which unit am I on? This mainly is uh, an issue or has to be dealt with when I'm looking at local. These are, of course, how I manage or manipulate through the graphics, and this is where I grab all the data points from. When I start with the new graphics, this is the screen that shows up. This is good information. I'm not gonna go over it. I have gone over most of it. The only thing here that is uh, worth noting uh, is that the uh, local graphics is a specific size. So uh, again, I'll be covering that at another time. And if I am doing the web, you can see a JPEG or PNG, but see it says less than one megabyte in size. So I've opened up, as we've been talking about, we've already opened up the web graphics. It says manage graphics right here. So I press on that tab. It gives me this pop-up screen right here. It wants to know how many local and how many web graphics uh, am I going to build. So this is where I will be selecting either my JPEG or PNG. Uh, we're just gonna now talk about the web. Uh, it says that we have one. I have to choose the file, the file, uh, will now be available uh, wherever I have it on my computer, uh, either a PNG or a JPEG. And remember, I can do up to five. And once I've selected that file, then I'm going to do save. Now, this just so happens to be a local, but the process is identical. So I just uh, am going to use this as a good reference point here. Uh, once this uh, PNG or JPEG file is loaded, then I come over and I expand open uh, my data points. And this is where I will grab a data point and I will drag and I'll drop it onto uh, the drawing over here. Once I have all my points dragged and dropped over, then I will go into the save process. And as you can see, when I save, it's going to take these data points that have been overlaid and it's going to send them, uh, it's going to create the DPJ uh, file, which combines everything and it's going to force a reset on all the controls. So every control that is on a host network will reset at this point. They will all reside with this file, uh, the DPJ plus the uh, FLP and the VZ2 files as well. Now here is a web graphics. Uh, but again, the format is the same, uh, and these points, one more time, can be overlaid on. Uh, the thing that you want to take note of here is the data point setting. So here's a data point, and if I left click uh, two times or double click on it, I'll get this pop up here, and it says, what size do you want this data point? And do you want to also be able to see the name? And do you also want to know if it's degrees F or, or degrees C or whatever that is that you're using? And if I have a case control, I also get an option here, display parameter name, um, because the parameter set in a case controller is a little different. And once I've selected that, I do a, an OK. And that's what it will now show me down here. Uh, and everything following that will follow the same structure. Once I've built and it's downloaded to the controls and uh, the graphics is loaded into the uh, controllers, then I have the option to do an export. When I select export, it will pull back the information out of those controls into a zip file and have that in my download folder on my computer. So now I have that zip file available to me to store for future reference. If I am upgrading a control with a brand new data package, uh, maybe I changed out the control, uh, but if I'm loading in the database, then the graphics does not come with that. 
you have to keep the graphics available and loaded in separately, especially if I'm changing out of control. I now load the database in. I have to follow up by loading in my graphics as well, which would be this zipped up package, which has that DPJ, which is my uh, project file. And one last thing to note is that the JPEG or the PNG does not follow, does not is not part of it. So because of that, you want to be keeping those type of files uh, also in your computer in case you have to modify. If I need to import, that's where uh, I just referenced if I upgraded a control, I keep using the term upgrade when I would change out a control and I load in the database, I want to also load in the um, graphics. This is where I would use the import feature. So we're now on a live unit. Remember, all graphic builds must be done on a live controller. Uh, the controller is sitting next to me, so it is a mocked up controller that, that has a database in it. Uh, if you look at the menus uh, options up here, you do not see graphic view, which means there currently is no graphics uh, residing in this uh, unit. And that's what we're going to build and put in there now. I'm going to go to the menu option over here, utilities. I'm going to go to the graphics editor. And this graphics editor will go out to the control and it will find uh, all the options that are out in the uh, this unit and load them back. Data points is what I'm referring to. And these data points are now sitting right here. Uh, these are broken into these different categories. This particular database also has case controllers. So here would be the case controllers. Uh, if I wanted to look at maybe something like pressures, they would be sitting right here. Because I have a, uh, a new setup here, uh, these items are grayed out. That's because I already have a uh, graphics package open. That's why I can't do a new one. I can't open one because I already have one open. I don't have um, anything to import because uh, I've never built one. So that's why they're grayed out. So we're going to go to the manage graphics. And we are only today going to work on the web screen graphics. I am going to say I have one. Uh, for the sake of it, I'm going to put two in there just to, to show you that we can build up to five. When I say choose, I'm going to select this one and say open. Uh, I'm now going to go to the second one and I will select this one and say open. Notice that they're JPEGs. And so now I have two of those and I do a save. Now, right now it's on the local screen. Uh, on this video, we're working on the browser view. So I'm going to change to the browser view and we can see the drawing right here. And if I go here, I can look at the second drawing that I have available to me. So we could have up to five of these. We will go back to this one. And we're now going to overlay some uh, data points onto the drawing. So if I open this up, I maybe want to start with the outside temperature and I'm going to drag and drop it onto the uh, drawing. Now, this is a temperature read. If I take my mouse and I double click on it, left double click, you can see that I can go to a larger font. I can put the point name and I can put the units on it as well. Notice when I say OK, it now gives me a lot more information. But if you do not have room on your drawing, then uh, you very well maybe need to stay with simply the data read and none of the other information. Now, because I just changed to that, the next one I do will have the same and all subsequent ones following will as well. And if I wanted to align these or make them fit in there I uh, at the exact spot where I want them, I'm using my arrows on my keyboard and I'm trying to get them as lined as best I can. Then I click on this one, highlight it, and I'm doing the same type of thing. So now I have everything aligned just like I so choose. I uh, notice that um, I maybe want to go back to, uh, I'm going to take this temperature one right here, suction temperature, and I'm going to put it here, but I do want to go back to 
adjust the temperature read. So again, I left click, I take and I unclick, and I say OK, and now you can see it's just back. And now all following will follow that format as well. Once I've overlaid all the points on this entire drawing, then I go up to the Save option. With that, it is now downloading to the control that drawing as well as all those overlaid points. So the DPJ file was just constructed uh, and it was sent down to the control and it's now saved at the control with this drawing as well. And notice that it was successful and I have to restart all the units. So if I have a host network of multiple units, just by me clicking yes, they're all going to restart right now. So I am waiting for that unit to restart. Um, one more thing to bring to light here is, uh, and I realize that the, the drawing is not there, but just a couple of reference points. You can see when I get into a case control, uh, many, a many a point, that can be overwhelming. Uh, the main temperature read is going to be U17, so the best way to manage that is go up here and put in U17. Now, notice I can go to each of the case controls and just see U17 available to me. So a very good way using the uh, search option up here to narrow down your points that you want to overlay. So I'm going to go to Home. My unit is back up. Notice I got another option here now called Graphics View. So when I click on that, it's showing me this map and it is showing me these points that I've overlaid. Notice up here it has two. Here was that second drawing. Now we never overlaid onto it, but that's how you can have your multiple views available to you. So this is how anytime that you log into the store, you can go directly to your graphics view and you can see it in this format and you can build your picture however you like. You're just building it in a JPEG or a PNG and then you overlay your points. So now that we have the graphics uh, loaded in uh, and available to us, uh, we are wise to save a copy of it. So go back to your graphics editor And the option available to us is to export it. So what we're doing is exporting it from the control. It wants to know a name. Um, we maybe are going to call this uh, store XYZ, and we're going to export. And you're going to see down here that it is pulling that file in a zip format and it will be in our download. And now you can save that anywhere on your computer that you have future uh, availability to it. Uh, then the other option would be to import. And that would be if I loaded in uh, a brand new database, uh, because it was a new control, I put in a new database and I would follow up by loading in the same zip file. Uh, and then I would have my graphics available to me with that control as well. Thank you for watching our video and for more documentation and videos on the system manager, please visit danfoss.com slash supermarket support.